Well, if the driver of your school bus runs into a truck, hits a lamppost, drives into a ditch, you don't say his intentions are good. You get a new bus driver. It was hours, I think it was four hours or something like that, that Eisenhower was in the studio, Reeves producing uh, new scripts constantly in the background, passing them to Milton Eisenhower, who would vet them for suitability and then give them to his brother, who was to take them as they came in. And Eisenhower would get more and more upset about some of it. Uh, and finally, Reeves remembered Eisenhower shaking his head and saying to think that an old soldier would come to this. While the old general was selling himself like aspirin, his running mate, Richard Nixon, was accused of selling out to a Republican slush fund. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Richard Nixon. My fellow Americans, I come before you tonight as a candidate for the vice presidency and as a man whose honesty and, te and integrity has been questioned. I am going at this time to give to this television audience a complete financial history. Everything I've earned, everything I've spent, everything I owe. In the presidential campaign of 1952, a scandal surfaced over money given to Nixon by a group of California businessmen. Instead of supporting Nixon, Eisenhower started to look for a replacement. When Nixon heard about Ike's plans, he didn't go to the press. He did something unheard of at the time. Nixon's instinct was, well, we don't need the printed press as a connecting link between us and the people. We can go over their heads through the use of television. So it is a quantum leap in political manipulation. Pat doesn't have a mink coat. But she does have a respectable Republican cloth coat. And I always tell her that she'd look good in anything. Nixon's wife, Pat, was mortified by the way her husband revealed their financial situation. But the presentation convinced millions of Americans that Pat and Dick were a typical American couple just like them. Nixon used that popular sentiment to force Eisenhower's hand. Because I am not a quitter. But the decision, my friends, is not mine. I would do nothing that would harm the possibilities of Dwight Eisenhower to become president of the United States. And for that reason, I am submitting to the Republican National Committee tonight through this television broadcast the decision which it is theirs to make. I have been a warrior, and I like courage. And tonight I saw an example of courage. All those in favor of Nixon continuing as a candidate will say aye. aye. Popular opinion forced Ike to embrace Nixon, but despite Ike's public displays, he never trusted Nixon again. And Nixon never forgave Ike for his lack of support. The two men virtually hated each other. But to the television watchers of America, they looked unified a Republican dream team. The great winner was television, which became mandatory from then on when they went out campaigning. If the print press wasn't there to cover him and ready to get in the buses, Nixon's instinct was, well, let's go anyway, screw him. We don't need them anymore, because that's where the political arena was now increasingly going to be focused. Nixon's speech also conveyed a more subtle message. Maybe it was time that average Americans shouldn't have to feel so guilty about a few frills, or, in Nixon's case, a gift of a little dog named Checkers. You know, the kids, like all kids, love the dog. And I just want to say this right now, that regardless of what they say about it, we're going to keep it. How much is that dog in the window? Between Eisenhower's ads and Nixon's performance, TV helped push the Republicans to a landslide victory. It was the beginning of a profound change in the American political process, a change that would echo throughout the world. Political parties declined in influence as the message of politicians became less important than the shaping of their image. Politics became casting. I mean, you were trying to make your candidates look as good as you could and sound as intelligent as possible, and they were being packaged through television, which you could never do before. I mean, television packaged politicians, and that had bound to have an effect on politics. <laughs> 